All right, uh, greetings family. This is Bomani Tahemba, and we're live on Revolutionary Cam, and here, I'm here with my beautiful sister, Farah, and she's gonna give a wonderful introduction about herself, and we're here to talk about a wonderful topic of hers as uh, we connect uh, with uh, the African roots and culture. Uh, we're here to talk about uh, Latinos connecting to the African roots. And, uh, and um, Farah, Farah also wanted to find out from you, um, um, you know, why you want to talk about this uh, subject and, um, you know, and just give a brief introduction and we just uh, kick it off and just have a nice dialogue to share with the family. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you first, but Malani, thank you so much for um, just allowing me to reach out to you and speak with you over the last couple of months via YouTube, you know, me finding you via YouTube and um, just connecting with you and what you do. I love everything about what you're doing, the mission, the um, goal to get our people back to our motherland. And I think that is wonderful. And I think it is um long overdue for us so thank you for that Appreciate um, <laughs> and um i would just like to say that i um i find the topic that i offered the topic to you um of latinos connecting to their african heritage because first of all i'm afro latina my mom is italian and spanish and my dad is african american um and I find that, so my unique story is um, my mother, <clears throat> excuse me, my mother married my father and my father is like your complexion. He's very, very dark, beautiful skin, beautiful, dark man. And we don't know our Puerto Rican because that's what my mother grew up as a Puerto Rican. And, but we don't know that side of the family at all. We don't know them. They they cut my mother off once she married my father. So that, having that perspective, it made me as from very young always push to be, I think, accepted by my African. You know, like I always, I never wanted to be the person that was like, oh, I'm I'm Puerto Rican, or uh, you know, I'm mixed. I never I never considered myself mixed, but. I think I was sharing with you that recently it's been this thing of, you know, if you're mixed, you're not really black and you're not really accepted as African or whatever. And it made me start thinking, I'm like, oh my goodness, like the European, I think had it right when they said, if you have one drop, <laughs> you're African. I go by that, by that rule. I'm African. I consider myself an African woman. Yes, I do accept the Spanish part of me because that is that does have an influence over me because mother is you know that's what she was, and the broader perspective is that I'm both, and we are both. We I'm sorry, meaning Puerto Ricans are Africans, and of course African Americans are Africans, and there's some African Americans that don't consider themselves African. I've learned recently. <laughs> And I'm like, well, what are you? You know, <laughs> if you're not African, they're like, I'm black American. And I'm like, I didn't know there was a country called black, but okay. But seriously, I, I just think that the topic is really, really important because I, I think Puerto Rican people, you know, Spanish, not so much Spanish European, of course, but I'm saying people who are influenced by the Spanish who are their roots are African, need to come back to that reality that you are African. You are the same as African people from Africa. It was just, it just depends on who colonized you. And I think that what you're doing, oh my goodness, like look at me, nobody from nowhere just reached out to you and you allowed me into your space and to discuss certain things with you. And I'm like, oh my goodness, like I belong here with the Africans. <laughs> this is what I've been searching for all my life, seriously. So, you know, the topic is long overdue, I think. We, we have to make the connection between the Latinos and the Africans. This is very important. I appreciate your energy and that uh, initial uh, introduction. And uh, one of the things I'm uh, getting from you is um, that uh, some of us um, don't see it the same way as you see it. Just like, uh, just like uh, someone like myself uh, is born in Jamaica, 
but not all Jamaicans see themselves as Africans. Some Jamaicans that are darker than me do not see themselves as Africans. Some of them consider themselves as native Indians and different things. But when I look at the variation of the communication when we talk about uh, race and cultural identity, it shakes a lot of people up. But you are who you are. Uh, if you're Panamanian and you speak Spanish and you look like me, um, yes, you're, you're, you're from a Latino culture, but you're African. Um, you know, based on your your based on your roots, um, whether you you know speak a certain language or partake in a certain culture, as so far as where your your spirituality go and things like that, that's different parts of your identity. But you're still an African as far as your race and you know, your roots. Uh, it's uh, and and a lot of people have different ways to interpret it and everything. I just always appreciate our brothers and sisters that are born in different parts of the world that speaks different language and practice different faiths and just different things. The ones that have the, the, the African energy like yourself, uh, you look just like my, you know, one of my sisters from uh, Brooklyn, New York, or from Jamaica. Um, but then again, do all of them consider themselves African? No. So, um, you know, I believe in spending time building and connecting with the energy of people who are interested in who they are and what they're about and reconnecting to them to their roots. I remember when I first started traveling to the African continent in 2004, it was uh, eye opening for me. Um, I've, I've been a complete different person from that time to now. For those who know me from that time, this knew someone different. But once you evolve into connecting with your roots, you realize that it's something very powerful. And only if more of us will embrace it, and then you know, even beyond just embrace it, I'm always one just reaching out to get more empowered energy into Africa to for us to build the continent as we need to, so we can have a, a nation for ourselves, just like. Uh, you know, the Chinese have China, Japan, uh, uh, Japanese have uh, Japan, the Europeans have, you know, all the different countries uh, in Europe. Uh, you know, so it's just uh, the same energy of Marcus Garvey. You know, I'm a big student of Marcus Garvey. You look in that, back, that bookshelf in the back, you see some race first books. Uh, you know, Marcus Garvey, uh, philosophies and opinion and so on. But um, you know, these are the things that uh, people like myself see in a world of just cultural madness. Uh, uh, two things, sharing the information, and then one, also making a move. So those of us who feel that we're so African, we can actually live in a, a nation in a continent called Africa and be a part of that growth. And for those, I guess they can keep on waiting for validation for whites and Europeans uh, in, this, you know, um, in the diaspora. So uh, what I want to find out uh, from you, um, have you always been on this journey as far as connecting into your, your roots and seeing more so as far as this one into this, you know, connecting to Africa energy? And you mentioned now, uh, once you started seeing information from people like myself, you started being able to see a different aspect of it. Because sometimes, I guess if you don't see certain things, it's hard. If certain things are not presented, it's, it's hard to make a decision for some of us. So some people choose to go with maybe their mother or father, and some people try to do both, but it seems like you're, uh, you're just ready, you are into the African spirit as an African Latino, ready to reconnect to the motherland. Yes, no, I, I was always afraid of planes, always afraid to travel, never, I'm 45, never travel outside of the country. But when I, okay, so I, I haven't always been this conscious, I think as I'm a grandmother now, so I think as I see my family expanding and I see how I'm getting older, you know, you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got to do things that really mean something as I get older and leave a legacy for, for these kids. My kids are 24, 23, 21, and 19. So I have to think differently than when I thought when they were younger because when they were younger, you know, I was married and, you know, doing, doing what you do when you're raising a family. And I didn't have the consciousness now that I have now because um, I think I never looked outside of the box of the United States. I just always, my mentality was always confined to the United States. But then when I was like, oh my goodness, like, people go to Africa and live there? Like, I just, you know... After I like saw your videos and you know I was like how do you relocate to Africa and I and I saw um, uh, Sister Imakis come up I saw you come up I saw other people that are 
into like just teaching people how to relocate. And I'm like, that's, that, that's what I need to do. Like my kids think I'm crazy right now. <laughs> like, like my two sons are, they're like, okay, let me get myself together. Let me see you do this first. And then I can try and, you know, get myself over there. Um, my daughters are on the fence, but. Are they looking at the same information as you? Or are they just processing it different? They're processing it different. Because I, I was sharing with you that their attention spans are not the same as mine. I can watch her hour-long videos and conference calls. They don't. They're like, I need something much shorter. But I'm pushing it now. Like, I'm like, even with my grandson, he's one month old. But I'm pushing it. A is for Africa. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> That's me now. Like, like, I'm over there. Like, I saw what you guys are um, doing in the um, um, Benu village. Benu village. Benu village, right? And I'm like, like through the screen, I'm like, oh my goodness, I, this is where I want to be. Like, I see the mountains and the, all that. Oh my goodness, that rustic land. And I'm like, I'm a nurse, and I'm like, I. I want to, I want to be a nurse there. Like I want to do something there. Even if it's not a nurse per se, I can, I can do something to help my people there. Now I'm all about how do we build up our own for our own? That's, that's the level I'm on now. And it's not disparaging anybody else's race. It's not disparaging anybody else's culture, but we come first. We've been last for so long. And it's like, that's the place that we need to build up. We, we were brought here to be slaves. We weren't brought here as slaves. We were brought here to be slaves. And that deconstructing of the mind, the mental state that had to occur for us to be slaves, you got to drop it at some point and say, you know what? I, I know my history here. I'm very aware of why I had to come to America. But now it's my choice. I don't have the chains on me anymore. The chains are here. If I if I keep the mentality of, well, this is this is you know I built this up and and because a lot of African people say this like they're like, mm -hmm. well I built this country right. You built it for the European. <laughs> you didn't build it for your own advancement. That's not the plan here. So that's my mission and teaching my own kids and teaching my family what I, you know, I didn't teach them that when they were younger. I didn't say, you know, Africa, you know, I didn't, like now it's just, you know, and I'm not starry eyed about Africa. I know I hear you and I'm just saying, like, don't be, um, you know, starry eyed and like, oh, it's just a perfect. No, we, if you take millions of people out of some place, it's not going to be built up. It's going to be, you know, some place that you have to build up and that's why we have to go back. Absolutely. Um, and along the lines of uh, many uh, aspects of what uh, you have said, these are some of the reasons why uh, some, some people don't want to be African or don't want to connect with their Africanness because it connects you to a continent that work has to be done. And uh, sometimes, unfortunately, um, we get to the point where we did this, we did this, but it's like people keep on saying we <laughs> do this. But uh, and I definitely understand where people are coming from. You know, most of their ancestors did certain oh. things. <laughs> Sorry, that's my one of my daughters. I must be to you. To do, um, you ready to go back? You ready to connect to the motherland with us? She's she's no. hiding from the camera. We got to be in the camera. Right now. I don't. Really <laughs> We have a um, we have a ride coming to get you to take you to the motherland. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but um, back to what I was talking about as far as um, building it, we always look at um, all these things that are built based on the uh, backs of our ancestors and the work of our genius of our ancestors and the contributions of you know, the uh, other people also. But uh, it's 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 kind of like a weak argument, um, you know, because you have a continent that you can, you know, you understand what uh, we as a people can build um, on the force and under certain conditions. Now we have an open opportunity uh, based on the, 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 the brain drain of all the great minds being taken out, you know, and that's before we were stolen and brought on the plantations of America to also this, uh, this current time where you're working on plantations called you know, the basketball court, uh, the NBA, NFL, 
so on to the corporate jobs, the military, uh, you know, the government jobs, uh, your, your executive position in the big buildings in Manhattan, all those wonderful things, all the people that feel like they have came, came up. You know, you're still part of that system. You know, so you being what you are is an investment for your oppressors and you feed into that system is only making it what it was meant to be and you hope all in it. But now we have a clear cut opportunities and I don't, you know, I don't always uh, feel or believe that everybody's going to get this, but the people who do feel like they're black conscious do feel and seek out their African roots and the Africanness. Uh, the African continent is that continent that where the people must work on to really just uh, build, you know, build, especially when we complain so much about certain things, when we complain about uh, issues of us about being treated, you know, treated a certain way because we're dark skin or because we're black or because of whatever circumstances is. And that points to this, us needing to really just focus more on saying, hey, um, you know, let me just think about, um, you know, think about the situation. I've been living in this country for 30 to 50 years. I've never left the borders of this country. Is it okay for me just to just continue on to the pace of what the system has been set up to this get from me until I'm just physically weak and old and probably die from all of the pharmaceuticals that they feed you with. Um, you know, it's just, a, it's just a roll down to where it's a debt trap. You're not really building anything. If we were to build more investments um, in the African continent, the things that we need, if you were to invest in it and really build communities like we talk about, you're good. But when I step outside my door, just like everybody else in this country, everything that you see is built up for you. Everything that you see is what it is. And only thing that you need to do is to be a consumer and participate. And, and that's it. So anything that needs to be culturally or racially divided to just get all of us scrambling, the, the system itself that I've invested, I'm talking about the folks who have invested in this generation of madness uh, that, you know, that, that are you know, making their funds from when we we're buying into their system as far as us all the things that we just spend money on that we sometimes probably don't really need. And, uh, you know, especially when we talk about like the holidays and you know, the Christmas, the New Year's, Thanksgiving, they're the, they're the one that just passed a little while ago. I think Easter is coming up, but also you had uh, Valentine's Day. That's another, another big one. And we just fall into this falsification culture. And, you know, so for those of us who really see the, the, the African spirit in us, we, you know, it's up to us to make that move and build Africa. So people like myself, have, you know, from my conscious journey from 2004, I've just been building this a trail of videos and, and documentation and work and tours and investments and repatriation since that time to kind of lead it up to where you can be more living and doing business in Africa and all the resources that uh, you'd normally just kick out to the system. Now you're using it to invest in your own hotels, your own transportation bus, uh, invest in your own, uh, you know, corporate uh, buildings, hiring the, the people that you need to do certain things. Uh, you know, so for people like myself who have built business here and you realize you never get rich, you know, you end up seeing things in Africa to where, wow, I can actually achieve. I'm not saying that it's all about riches, but you see certain things. So I'm basically telling people that who don't appreciate the African culture that you have a gold mine of wealth and a gold mine of freedom and a gold mine of being able to be a part of a righteous growth of that's that you be incorporated into a culture and not incorporated into a system that just want to suck you dry and oppress you. But I've said more than enough. Uh, and I think that's maybe that's why some people don't want to be connected to African, whether they are light skin, brown skin, dark skin, because, you know, we have a trail of us where we where we come in, in all different shapes. We're the darkest, darkest, the lightest light. But the individuals are the one that make up their mind based on the many other reasons and excuses that they can. And I appreciate yourself uh, sharing this and hopefully more of our brothers will just reach out and you know, just um, see some of the things that uh, you have seen in some of these videos and some of the conversations that take you outside of the box. Yes, and if I may add, um, just to touch on two things, I, I, I believe it was um, Amos Wilson who said that, um, you know, when you learn skills, when you have a skill set, you know, I'm just paraphrasing here. Um, you could be the, the best of the best. You could be the doctors, lawyers, engineers, whatever. But if, and I believe it was in one of his YouTube lectures that are up, it's called falsification of the African consciousness or something like that. He says, 
But if you have all of that knowledge, but you're working to solve somebody else's problem, you're useless to Africans. You're useless to us. So, and that's what the system is for. It's like the Matrix in the movie. They had to unplug themselves from, you know, we see all of this, like this, you know, shimmery lights and big cities and everything, like you said, built up. But it's, it's are you going to take the red pill or the, or the blue, pill? Blue, blue pill? You know what I'm saying? It's just a choice. It's just a choice. So if you choose to stay here, understand what your purpose is here. And understand that you're only going to get so far here. You're, the system is not created for you to advance as an African person. And Latinos, you might see yourself as white or other or mixed or whatever it is you see. But at the end of the day, you're treated as African. They see you as African. They know your history. You don't know your history. And you don't understand what it even means to be a Puerto Rican or a Panamanian, what that inculcates racially. So, like you said, we have the darkest of the darkest, the blackest of the blackest saying, like you said, oh, I'm, I'm, in, I'm Indian or I'm this. And it's like, you know, this is, we can't even get past this. And, uh, you know, forget nation building. Right. I, you know what I'm saying? Like, that is the petty I think the petty mindedness that when you live in a racial, highly racialized society, it produces pathology on both the European side and the African side. It is, it's a pathological system and you have to unplug yourself from that matrix in order to see the bigger picture in Africa where we come from. And there's people who will fight. I mean, I have family members who say, I'm black American. It, this country was, I'm, I'm black American, all that back to Africa stuff. I'm and to, to wow, this is back to Africa stuff. I love, I love the terminology <laughs> that folks come up with. Yes. It's crazy. So I, I agree 100% with what you're saying. And, and, you know, for, I don't think it takes, I don't think it takes a lot to convince somebody if they're already on a on the fence, like to say, you know what, you know, being Latino, yes, I see myself as an African person. Um, I just need to know my history more. But if you don't want to hear this message, you won't hear it. And you're only going to reach who needs to hear it. You reached me. I mean, like I said, we don't know each other. For, I've never met you personally. I just called you because I was like, I have to reach out to this guy. He's saying what I what I need to hear, you know? And this is how it's built. You're only going to reach those who, who are ready for your message. So and you're not saying anything radical. You're just saying, come on, guys, like, look at, look at our ancestors. Look what, they, look what they died for. You know, they died to get out of the chains. We're out now. Don't keep the chains on you. They're mental now. So. Absolutely. I appreciate you getting the, the, the view and the energy of it. Uh, and the things that we've always talked about has always been a little bit different from, you know, from certain people that talk about the, themselves being conscious. The level of consciousness that uh, we rolled into based on our study group was always about you know, connecting to Africa and, and you know, finding a way since no one has really illustrated how do we really escape and get out of the system and live you know, free in Africa. You, you know, there are books and a few things out there but there's not really a clear cut. So people like ourselves, once we started to learn a few things, we just, you know, figure, you know, just record all the conference call, record the videos, certain communications and just share them and see what goes. And I swear we didn't, I did not know that I would get here in this 2017 where we have bus loads of people going to Africa. It's like, I would, I would if you told me that that would happen, I would tell you that. that no way. Yeah. That, that's not going to happen. But I appreciate people who are really connected into the energy of, the documentation and uh, you know and the credibility that we've built for 10 years on all these wonderful journeys to Africa, making sure everybody get there safe and the ones want to come back, make sure they get back safe and the ones that want to stay there, make sure that you know, they're in good hands with our people uh, as a movement that took off fast than I thought it was um, as far as it, uh, in 2007, I had people literally start moving. And that's when I just started the business, you know, literally like a year later. <laughs> and you know, so sometimes when you put certain things out there, and you share certain things, um, you, know, you know, like you, you hear the terminology, 
we build it, they will come. <laughs> yes. So I feel like if we really connect those of us who feel the African spirit, um, you know, the ones, you know, because all of us are from the Americas, except, you know, some of us are more colonized by, you know, myself uh, and our folks, the, the English in Jamaica, uh, yourself and your folks, more so uh, the Spanish. And it's just all a level of this division from day one. You know, so um, I appreciate you just you know, busting out with the guts and everything and this, you know, sharing this message with your brothers and sisters and uh, letting them know that, uh, you know, that it is what, what it is. Unless you like pale skin, light, like almost like bright there white, <laughs> you, know, you know, you can't really just uh, go for the other or all these other things that are uh, being thrown at because all it's doing is dividing us, making it look like we're smaller numbers than we are. You know, when you, you know, when you look at, uh, you, you, you have a count for Latinos than Blacks. And I was like, portion of that count of Latinos. <laughs> and I'm always like, hey, uh, how are you just going to take a portion of our people because they speak Spanish in the Americas based on your Spanish colonizers and then, and do that. But it's like one of those games and give us different titles based on if you have, if, you know, if your, 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 your hair is thicker or curlier. Nappy, and that's a level nappy. of this division, uh, you know, it's like the damage is done. You know, we are who we are and the situation is what it is. Uh, but what we, what is destructive is if you just keep on feeding into it. And honest, I understand that's what the system and the persons will put certain things to get people, you know, in families where one person is dark and, and one is lighter and get caught into that. Uh, you know, things that, you know, we painfully share over the years. But I'm at a point where, you know, we understand those things and it's painful it is. It's what it is, but uh, let's make that move and connect to Africa and let's rebuild our, our glory. And I definitely want our family to uh, check out our website at, at uh, africaforafricans.org where they'll find all of the uh, full details, for all of the tours that we got going to uh, Africa, Brazil, and then all of the known black world in the future. Who knows the places that we'll go to because I didn't think we would go to this many places in general. Uh, so, um, you know, we'll keep it going, keep it building, and uh, we'll keep everybody posted on the actual movement of just our enterprise there, our, you know, our Africa for the Africans uh, diaspora uh, repatriation village, which is be neighboring with our sister, Nunet, uh, which has been there for a long time, uh, since you know, the early 2009 up to 2012, she built that foundation. So it takes sometimes visionaries making a move and then documenting it and doing it to reach out to the rest of us. So it seems like that's how all of us are connecting. So we know we're gonna have to just keep it strong. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Bomani. Absolutely, my uh, sister. Anything else you want to uh, share last before we close? I just want to say thank you. Like I always talk to you in the phone. I, thank you. That's it. That's all I can say. Keep it up. Um, I told you I'm, I'm like your biggest fan now. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I can't speak for anybody else, but you know, the, the, the connection needs to be made. And, and it's, it's really important, especially for this, our younger generation. They need to know that there's more to life than this system. Absolutely. From it and, and there's so much, so much more, so much bigger and better, so. Absolutely, my sister, so family, we keep it strong. <laughs>